These movies suck ass. I mean, where do I even begin? These films just start off rough and they change so many things for the worst to the point where it just doesn't even make sense anymore. This video should just be called why I don't like anime completion films, but among all the crappy attempts of condensing a story and making it work without missing all the important stuff, there are some pretty good ones. Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam's A New Translation is probably the worst example of anime completion films to ever exist. And today I'm gonna rant on why these films suck, so I don't know how well this video is gonna do because I'm gonna be pissed off for most of it. But if you want to see more content like this in the future, then you should totally subscribe because it's a more rewarding experience than watching these films for yourself. Probably. Anyway, I guess there's nowhere else to start this critique than the beginning. Oh yeah, and also spoilers. Okay, so I'm already gonna start off negatively, but the first film, Heir to the Stars, didn't start off too strong. One of the interesting parts of series like Mobile Suit Zeta Gundam or the original Gundam series was how we get introduced to the protagonist for a couple of minutes, then we quickly see how they get torn away from their everyday lives due to the certain conflicts that consume their homes. Well, the first scene we get to see of our protagonist, Camille Biden, he is already in the middle of making that transition out of his normal life. And what's worse, the whole chunk that the movie skipped over of Camille's introduction, in my opinion, actually characterizes him. One of the main ways to successfully introduce a character in a movie, novel, or TV series is through good characterization. If you don't do that, then the character will come off as a boring person. It makes viewers understand or to root for different characters, and in the original series, we're first introduced to Camille in his everyday life, skipping school to the annoyance of his friend Fa, who seems to nag him almost every second of his life. And when he eventually arrives at a spaceport filled of titans, which are basically a federation faction, we not only get to see the personalities of some of the characters that this series will follow for episodes to come, but we also get to see the signs of corruption within the federation. And in here he basically snaps at the slightest mention of how his name is a girl's name. It shows how he's a brash kid who's prone to making quick decisions without thinking, which causes him to get in more trouble. And this whole beginning sequence where we meet Camille also shows how he's really good with mechanics, which we later on learn could be from the influence of his parents or people he resents for many reasons. Maybe even because of the choice of his birth name, I don't know. I'll show you a timeline which will hopefully show you how pissed off I am about this. We don't start this film or in the show, where we meet these new characters like Camille through some good characterization and dialogue, but we start after that. And what's even worse, we get to see these bits of characterization in a 5 second flashback from one of the characters who basically says, Oh yeah, it's that kid who has a girl's name. It just makes it so much hard to understand what's going on, even if you're a first time viewer of Zeta Gundam. Like if you've never seen Zeta Gundam before, and you just see this kid steal a Gundam for literally no reason whatsoever, and then you find out in a very brief fashion, it'll just confuse the hell out of you. And it's not just the introduction of the characters that get cut. This movie basically cuts over 5 episodes into literally 30 minutes, which as a result has a bunch of continuity errors like when Camille first enters the Mark II Gundam that he steals, he tells a Titans officer named Emma Sheen to get out of the way without him ever knowing her name, which is weird because to me it seems like they're just trying to save more time in introducing her character. And not only does it cut so much stuff from the beginning, it continues to get rid of numerous encounters and episodes that served as stories that serve the overall narrative. It's not as bad as the next two movies, but overall the only bad stuff from the first movie was the introduction. But mostly the second half of this film picked up steadily and personally my favorite part of the film started with the reintroduction of Amuro Ray when he joins the AU. I think for the most part it was pretty good in terms of consistency and pacing because they actually added a few more scenes, not that many new scenes but a few more scenes that I really enjoyed. But yeah, if I haven't made it clear yet, I loved the ending of this first film. And I personally think it did it better in terms of animation, music, acting, literally everything better than the original anime in this final scene. But there's only one negative about this final scene though, and it's with things involving Rosamia. Okay, so if you don't know or remember who this woman is, she's a cyber new type who sided with the Titans. 
And her whole thing is basically being under the command of a higher up, which does tie into some of Zeta Gundam's major themes concerning these types of relationships with cyber new types and how they're pretty much abusive. And the unfortunate thing here is that she basically is just introduced in this movie when the fighting starts, then she just dips out and never returns, which is not really a surprise considering they do the same thing to another cyber new type. I don't even understand why she even showed up if she just never shows up ever again. I mean, she just does this in a final battle with Camille and Sirocco too. Like, why is she even there? It just doesn't make any sense. I'll talk about this more in a few more minutes, but now we can start with the next movie titled Lovers. While I don't like how these next two films stray further and further away from the original source material, I do like most of the newly animated sequences that are made for these films. But later on I'll talk about why this was also a very bad thing for these films. But starting off, this film picks off literally right off from the last one. So it's not too hard to piece it all together, especially if you're binging it. But this film is where the most of my problems start showing up with the introduction of 4. 4 was probably one of my favorite characters in the series, mainly because with her introduction we get to see how fucked up the Titans are, since they're brainwashing more people and turning them into cybernetically enhanced new types. And while they keep her introduction the same for the most part, in the second half of this film you get to see Camille run into her and basically fall in love with her, only for her to just die early. And I just hate how she just dies too soon, because in her introduction, you get to see little to no death in terms of the trauma and sort of brainwashing she goes through. You see a tiny bit, but in the original series that intrigued me so much, because cyber new type sounded like a pretty cool concept in theory, but in practice it's literally the worst thing ever because it breaks down the person's mind, and they're basically being forced to be subjected to shitty conditions in which their personalities and memories are manipulated to make them into more effective soldiers in battle. In short, they're being artificially altered to be more effective mobile suit pilots, but in the cost of their own humanity. It's such an interesting type of element to the story that I really enjoyed seeing, because it brought so much more depth to the story as a whole. But sadly, none of this is explored in the films, the same things could be said for Rosamia. She's just like four. And in this series, she was brainwashed by the Titans into believing that Camille is her brother, even though it's not even true. And throughout Zeta Gundam, Camille forms connections with these troubled new types very easily considering he's a new type. And due to these unfortunate circumstances that follow, he as a result hates the Titans more and more because of this, which makes the ending of the series utterly tragic yet satisfying depending on how you look at it. My point is, 4's whole purpose in the series was to show how messed up the Titans are, and 4's only purpose here in the series was to get Camille back into space, which really pissed me off. And what also pissed me off is how they actually show a pretty good connection between these two, considering they're new types and once they come into contact with each other, they can learn to understand each other more almost instantaneously. Which also confuses me so much, because when Camille goes back into space, thanks to 4, he seems to never mention 4 at all for the rest of the film. But in the original series, you could tell how much more mature Camille is after 4's death. And he even fights for a more believable cause, which is what the series leaned towards more. In the original 0079, it kind of leaned towards the Federation being the good guys and Zeon being the bad guys, at least in the original air. But in here, the Federation are now being considered the bad guys because of the Titans. And the Ayug aren't really good guys either. They don't really do things in a manner of justice, but it's mainly done because of each individual who joined the Ayug did so for a specific purpose. People in the Federation believe that the Ayug is run by a bunch of Zeons, but it's not the case. Camille couldn't stop the death of his lover, and he realized his purpose for even joining the Ayug to prevent more people from becoming cyber new types, or at least to prevent the abuse of cyber new types. And it's what makes this ending of the series so tragic, like I said earlier. Also, something that I noticed that the film does once it enters its halfway point, the AU gets a few new mobile suits, one of which is the iconic Zeta Gundam, which is probably one of my favorite mobile suits in the Universal Sensory. And they never explain who created it, which they actually did in the original series, and they even mentioned it before when Camille got back into space, or when he got into space, I kind of forgot. But it literally came out of nowhere in these films, and it ticked me off for a little bit. Like for the new mobile suits, uh, I'll use the Double Zeta as an example. They mentioned people behind the production of it are currently making it, and they usually tend to ease into the introductions of these new mobile suits. It's not done in like a very instant manner, 
But in the film, they just say, We got a new mobile suit for you. Enjoy. Like, what? But even though I mentioned so many negatives in this movie, I think one of the best things these films did was with Haman's introduction. It's so good. It sent chills down my spine. And I think it was done a lot better than the anime. I don't know why I'm saying this for the end parts of the film, but that's going to change for the next one, which is where all my problems lie. Which I guess you can already tell what issues I have with it. Even though I hate the ending, the rest of it isn't all that bad, considering they decide to skip three of the best episodes in the entire series, but I've already talked about that way too much. This movie also made me notice a lot of tropes and patterns in the overall series that becomes a staple of even Double Zeta, which is just people randomly deciding to have a fit and sorting out the battle. But the pacing in this film is really good, and it works better than the last two, mainly because they don't cut out very important moments that serve the whole series. I remember that the pacing in this series is very slow considering it's a 50 episode series, but all the episodes were self-contained, and each episode was its own story. But here the films feel a little bit more connected entirely, and I think it works a lot better in this format. I do like the ways they bring the Titans specifically, Sirocco, into the conflict between Axis, Zeon, and the AU. And it feels all the more chaotic here and then the TV series. And man, they just go hard in the final act. I mean, the fights are absolutely incredible, animation is spectacular, and it feels like it only ramps up as the minutes go by. And I guess it's a good time to talk about the price of having these awesome looking scenes. They had the time to completely reanimate some sequences, but not enough to reanimate the whole film. And it's not out of laziness, it's mainly having to do with time. As a result, they had to remaster most of the series and crop most of the image into a 16 by 9 ratio. And the change between the old and new scenes are just jarring. At least the old 0079 ones were made within the same time period, so it was less jarring. But for Zeta, it was a whole 20 year difference. But not only did they have to do this, but the original footage just looked terrible when they remastered it. And I guess to have it somewhat match with the new footage, they just slapped an artificial layer of grain on it or something. But moving on from how it looks, I'm going to be talking more about the ending of this film. Maybe I was too harsh before, but even though I don't like the ending as much, it's nice. I, I'm not some f***ing psycho that likes seeing dark and depressing endings, but I don't mind seeing the nice ending that Camille and Fa has, even if it completely fucks with the rest of the timeline. I'm not going to lie, it had me laughing at some parts. There was this part where on the bridge in the Argama where they were all listening to what Camille and Fa were saying when everything else was all done. And they were kind of repeating what they were saying to other people in a funny ass voice. I honestly didn't expect that. It was kind of funny. And while all this stuff was nice, it just doesn't work though. For the most part, it completely goes over the stuff from Double Zeta and Shara's counterattack and so on. Mainly because of things that happened to Camille in the end of the series. And it doesn't work considering the themes of this series, but to be fair, Tomino wasn't in that much of a good place from Zeta to Victory Gundam, so I don't completely blame him for wanting a much happier toned ending. I mean, he's done it before with Idion, considering all the dark stuff in that final portion, but the ending to me seemed like it was really hopeful, so he's pulled it off before. Video on that series soon. But overall, I don't think it works here considering all the missing things that would have made it work as much as Tomino wanted to. There's so much character interactions and episodes that were skipped to make things so much more impactful in the ending and series for me. But personally, it's what made the ending in Double Zeta more impactful for me. And while very short, seeing Camille and Fa and Double Zeta having their own happy ending there was just so much more satisfying for me. But I guess that's it for this one. So, overall, these movies weren't as bad as people give them credit for. But if you know someone who is interested in Zeta Gundam, don't tell him to watch a new translation first. My brother made that mistake and now he hates all of Zeta Gundam, which is a damn shame. Also, I'd like to give a quick thank you to Rob and Dave over at the We Heart Giant Robots channel. Their latest video on Zeta Gundam made me want to make a video about a new translation, so you should totally check them out. Soon I'll probably do a video on the best example of completion films being the old 0079 ones, so that'll be fun. But for the most part, the experience rewatching a new translation wasn't all that bad. So thank you all for listening to me talk about these films over 10 minutes. And I hope you all stay tuned for the next video. See you all next time.